Hello, hello, hello. Happy, what night is this? Tuesday night. It's Transformation Tuesday. I thought I would, as promised, hop on live again. And I also thought I would um, start tonight's live video with a funny story. And my story is that, well, if you caught this last night, I did a live video last night announcing that miraculously and astonishingly, I have been chosen as a finalist for the CoverGirl search for Inked Magazine. And um, I wanted to come on live because Facebook loves live video. And I thought, I'll do a live video because this competition is based on votes. Hi, Kristen. And um, Kristen knows this funny story that I'm about to tell. And I'm telling a story first so that people have a chance to hop on. And you guys are already all hopped on. Um, I thought it'll make a lot of sense if I do a live video because live videos get lots of traction. Like Mark Zuckerberg likes himself a live video. The algorithms of Facebook prefer things live. So I'm like, I'll do a live video. I'll explain to them how I got into this contest and I'll ask them to help support me with votes. And so the funny thing is, is the video was great and um, it was awesome. So thank you guys that joined me last night. That was a great, that was great fun that we had. <laughs> but then when the video was over, I went to um, share it. So hi, Rumi. Anne was my roommate once at a Beachbody Live Master Trainer event. So henceforth, she's always just referred to as Rumi. I went to share the live video. You can share it. You can also save it to your camera roll, which I like to do that too, because I like to take good live videos and put them on my YouTube channel. And guess what I accidentally did? <laughs> I accidentally reported the video. I reported it. You know how you can report something as like inappropriate? I reported my video and it was not inappropriate. It was awesome. <laughs> and it was like foundational for the next two weeks with what I'm gonna be doing for coming on live. So I was actually able to save a copy of that video to later upload it to um, my YouTube channel and to later actually even upload it to my Facebook account, although it's no longer live. <laughs> so that's my funny story. So if you missed sort of how and why I ended up in the Inked Cover Girl um, magazine competition, you'll have to go back and look for that strange live video that I reported as inappropriate. <laughs> Um, I told a couple of my friends, they were laughing at me, like, you reported yourself, ha <laughs> ha. And I was still like, still pissed off about it. I did not want to find humor in it. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing tonight is talking to you guys. Um, you guys saw the title of the video, why I already think I've won. <laughs> and I'll explain that um, at the end of my video. But first, I thought I would just talk to you guys for the first time about the process and how I started getting tattooed and why. And um, I started at age 36, hadn't had any tattoos. I am now 43, so it's been a six year endeavor. It has become something I didn't know it would become. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, thank you guys all so much. And I'm gonna get to this big like gushing thank you at the end. Um, I started, I kinda always wanted to be tattooed. Um, I'm also an artist. Um, I also am like, I'm actually really conservative. I was raised in the church. Um, so I felt like it would be unaccepted um, for me to get tattooed. And I was scared about being tattooed, all those things, you know, scared of the pain, um, scared of what people would think, um, scared of what my family would think, scared of what my church would think. Uh, I actually just had a lot of fear about it. I mentioned yesterday in the video that um, I used to be just sort of a big old people pleaser, um, wanted everyone to like me and um, wanted to be everybody's friend. And so um, it's a hard life. Um, so, I wanted to get tattooed and I started looking for a tattoo artist. I went to some tattoo shows. Um, I would ask people that I would see in real life, like 
who did your artwork. Even if it was artwork I didn't like, I'd want to know who did it. If it was artwork I did like. And then one day, actually teaching a cycle class, I saw the most beautiful tattoo on someone's arm. This man, it was a tattoo of his wife. Um, and it was the most beautiful tattoo I'd ever seen. Obviously, art is subjective. To me, this was the most beautiful tattoo I'd ever seen. And I said, I was like, that's, that's like, I just need to find out who this artist is. And like, I hope he doesn't live in New York. I hope I don't have to fly across the country. So um, I found out that he was um, pretty local. It was gonna be a road trip, but still in Oregon, barely, Southern Oregon. And this is very exhausting trying to please everybody. Believe me, I know I tried for 40 years. And then I stopped and it's like, oh, life is so good. <laughs> I get to see who my real friends are. I get to see who really likes me for me. Um, anyway, so I, um, I was warned that this artist um, likes to, um, is just very picky. Books are closed, hard to get into, like doesn't really take on new clients. And so not to have high expectations, but that if I were to maybe go meet him, maybe then there would be um, a chance. And so, but it's a road trip. It's like a three hour road trip to like maybe go meet somebody that there might be a chance. And so that's actually where it started. I took that road trip and I met this tattoo artist. And for those of you guys who don't know, his name is Jeff, J-E-F-F, Gogue, G-O-G-U-E. He's Guamanian. And um, his shop is now called 26 Swords. And I'm only telling you that and spelling that out in case you wanted to like look him up. YouTube, Facebook, Insta, whatever. Um, he's an awesome guy. Um, just he's an awesome human being and is now a very dear friend of mine. So it started um, with my husband and I coming into his shop saying, will you tattoo us? Yes, us. Yes, my husband and I. Um, my husband also got tattooed by him six years ago, a portrait of me on my husband's chest. And he stopped getting tattooed <laughs> because it's not so much for him as it was for me. So, um, Let's see, that's kind of when it started. And it started with a, this is very ironic, a, um, it started with me wanting to do kind of an homage to my father. It's ironic because um, my dad is who I feared the most um, when I decided to get tattooed. In fact, I didn't want him to know and I didn't tell him. And I was like, he never needs to know. But I still wanted to honor him with the artwork, which is funny. Um, eventually he found out. <laughs> didn't go very well. Still doesn't, still isn't going very well. But um, my dad used to call me, my dad is like a nicknaming kind of a person. Like, I love that. I love that my dad likes to nickname everyone. I love nicknames. He used to call me all kinds of things. Um, all kinds of things. Like one of his nicknames to this day, he calls me Elbow. And um, he would call me Belle. Um, you know, like like sometimes like B-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, like Belle, like beautiful. Sometimes Bell, like, like Bells, like B-E-L-L-S. And um, I loved that he called me Bells. And uh, some of my friends that know that call me Elbow. So anyway... I wanted to get bells on my arm. This is where my tattoo started. It was an homage to my father who I knew would hate my tattoo. I know that sounds crazy, it's okay. It's just, I know it sounds crazy. So we, but I was like afraid that, also that being tattooed might make me look like masculine um, and not feminine and pretty, which mattered to me. So I wanted the tattoo to look feminine and I wanted it to be bells, so we did bell flowers. And it was a very airy tattoo down my um, left arm. And you can't really see that much of it today um, because it has changed a lot. Uh, or it hasn't really changed a lot, but it's just now kind of hidden. But it was a very airy, and by airy I mean you could see a lot of negative space. You could see a lot of skin. Hi, Amy. 
Uh, hi, Wendy. You could just, this, um, it was very airy. You could see more negative space than positive space, more skin than tattoo. And it wound around my shoulder, my side, all the way down, really far down my hip um, and onto my butt. And that was the first tattoo. And then um, my husband got tattooed at that same appointment. And then anyway, later I went back and I did my, um, I decided to do a sleeve on my other arm, like a sleeve that doesn't have all that negative space. And this was an homage to my mother. Um, my mother and I are, <sighs> I love her. We are so, I think we are so close. And um, she'll probably hop on this video if she's not already on here. And uh, I don't think she was keen on the idea of me getting tattooed either, um, but she respects me. And so um, this tattoo is an homage to my mother and her mother, my grandmother. And um, this is a very Art Nouveau theme. Alphonse Mucha, he's an 1800s painter, and he painted a lot of different things, um, women, floral. And um, this woman is winter. She represents winter. Um, and uh, I could say so much more about it, but I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna move on. So this Art Nouveau sleeve really to me is a beautiful um, tribute to my mom and to her mom who has passed away. And um, they love birds, they love the snow, um, they love Christmas. And um, Stephanie remembers coming in a cycle and seeing the one on the right right after I got it. So. What's interesting and what I wanted to share with you guys about this sleeve is that I was still so afraid of the world and what people would think of me and um, the church and all those things. And so I was very like, I want it to be a three quarter sleeve. Like it needs to stop here. So it actually stopped at the bottom of her dress because I was afraid of it ever being seen and I really wanted to be able to hide it. So um, just to fast forward a little bit in this progression because I have a lot more to say and I should not talk to you forever. Um, the next appointment, you guys, was for my back. And I think what's interesting about my back piece, and my back is my, my favorite part of the entire piece. My back is my favorite piece. Um, if you were to ask me, what should I get tattooed? If you were to ask my opinion, about getting tattooed, I would say go big, make it epic. And um, I would also tell you that your back is a beautiful canvas. It's this big open space. And so my back is my favorite part. And what's interesting about my back, you guys, is that it was literally um, an impromptu, spontaneous decision that I made late one night to start it the next morning. It was, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Impulsive. It was impul like you think like when you think about getting tattooed, you don't want to be impulsive, right? I made the decision that night that the next morning I would get tattooed. So decisions like what are we going to tattoo on my back were made in moments. And it's the most epic part of the whole piece. And so I love that part of the story. Um, my back is these two beautiful white egrets flying under the moon. And um, without going into too much detail, that to me is a tribute to my marriage. Some people, like, I don't wear a wedding ring, which is it's another discussion. But my back is like my marriage. And um, when I had my back tattooed, um, my husband was sobering up. Uh, becoming sober and it was this homage and this um, tribute and this picture of our life to me and um, and yet at the time I didn't even know if my marriage was gonna survive that time and uh, it's so meaningful to me now and again that was a, that was an an impulsive decision so um, so, uh, so, but at the time, I still could hide my back. So I still was like, I was becoming pretty heavily tattooed, but in a way that could be hidden. And my tattoo artist, who I named earlier, Jeff, he was also going through a transformation professionally as well. Like, um, 
parallel to mine and um, I let him lead me quite a bit. Thank you for all of those thumbs up. That's probably for my husband's sobriety. <laughs> There's always like a lag time between like when you guys give emojis and when they show up. Um, so um, what was I gonna say about, high? oh, the, the parallel. So Jeff was starting to really do large scale, massive, epic artwork, like bodysuits. And, um, oh, thank you for all that love. Thank you for all of that. Sorry about my dog. Sorry about my dog. Um, so, um, Jeff was starting to be, talk to me about Japanese style and about, um, Japan and um, the culture behind um, this Japanese style and it interests me and I thought it was beautiful and I was intrigued and I was curious and I started to study and I started to read books about it and I started to look up you like I started to study like Japanese culture and um, tattoos yeah sorry about the dogs that is gonna probably always happen when I go live um, dog noise so um I was just evolving. So also, interestingly, my husband, like, a mat, like this is not an easy thing for him. It's a monumental expense. Um, and it's my body, and it was hard. And he wasn't always on board, like, when I was on, like, he wasn't as on board as I was. And so um, I had been previously in a marriage where, um, like, I definitely did not have a say in anything. <laughs> like, I didn't have a voice in my first marriage at all. I didn't have a voice. And um, I, my husband really, my husband really respects me and has always supported me and my voice. So even though he wasn't as into what I was maybe doing or didn't understand it, he supported me. But there was always this like, for so long, for like, gosh, four and a half, five years of this process, it wasn't until last summer that he was like, I'm just all in. You wanna cover your body, cover your body. Cause he like didn't want me to do this and didn't want me to do my legs and didn't want me to do this part. And like, I get it, I get it, it's a hard thing. Let me swipe this away. There's a little calendar alert in front of all your faces. So um, I wanted to respect him too. It was just a hard thing. It was a hard thing in my marriage. Um, that we, that, uh, ultimately has been a beautiful thing. So, um, at, at one point he said, and I, I'm, I just got way ahead of myself. At one point he was like all in and he's like, just go, just do it. And that's when I tattooed my legs. And that was the most recent. So a year, like tomorrow I'm going to wine country on a trip that a year ago I took, it was a year ago. It was one year ago, this wine, this trip that I'm about to take tomorrow, it was one year ago that my husband actually fully got behind me. But so anyway, back to like sort of the progression and I, I'll, I'll wrap this up soon. Um, I, my back had this, you know, huge back piece. And by the way, when you're doing large scale tattooing, it doesn't always look awesome. You know, if you're doing like a small piece, it can be like finished in one appointment and it can look good. But when you're doing epic large scale work, you can, I can, I mean like, it can be like an outline can take eight hours, you know? And then doing a little bit of shading behind that huge piece, you know, can take an appointment and then you, you go home and you spend the next few months like weird, you know, weirdly tattooed. And it's just a, it's just a different, Thing and it takes patience and force and like trust and um, it's just a massive commitment and so um, I was growing through all of that and then um, I remember when we decided to cross my wrists that was like honestly one of the scariest 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 parts of my whole tattoo because I was like at that point like there was there was finally no more hiding from my dad. <laughs> like, 
there's really, unless it's a Lululemon shirt with like the thumb holes, like it's real hard for me to hide it anymore. And so that was huge. So scary. Like I had my whole back done, no big deal, but like cover the, go across the wrist half an inch and I was freaking out. Um, similarly, when we decided to tattoo my chest, across my chest, um, I was also terrified and I remember Jeff said to me, I remember sitting on the edge of his table in the morning um, to be tattooed. We decided we were gonna do my chest. I knew that was gonna happen that day, um, the outline, and the out, you know, it's not like you can erase it, like it's, it's permanent. And he said to me before we started, people will, people will see you differently now. Like people will judge you. People will judge you because you're tattooing your chest. Do you wanna do this? And I was like, yeah, I do. That was a big pivotal turning point too, the wrist, the chest. Um, and then of course, like finally, like my legs, that was like when my husband was all in. So, um, that's kind of like the backstory in um, kind of when and how it all progressed. I'm leaving out a lot of like fine detail, which I'll get into with you because I'm going to do a live video maybe every night for the next couple weeks because I want to ask you guys to vote for me in this contest. And I thought it's only fair that maybe I start to talk to you guys about what I've been doing um, instead of just showing you all the fitness stuff all the time. Um, but maybe actually start to talk about this tattoo a little bit more. So um, it's been a scary thing for me. It's been about, I think, the reclamation of my life. Um, you know, those of you that are like moms and you have babies and you, you know, breastfeed and then you, like your body just sometimes isn't your own for a while. And I think that in so many ways for me, and in my, like I mentioned my first marriage, I didn't have a voice, I didn't have um, so many, like it just was um, like, I, I'm not gonna air any dirty laundry on Facebook, but um, it was not a happy place. And, uh, and so I know it's weird that I tattooed my body, but I think that has just been my own statement to myself and it, uh, not really has ever meant, been meant to be a statement to the world, uh, but to myself and to maybe young women um, or women of any age that um, we can take our power back and take our voice back. And um, So anyway, that's a little bit about that. As far as the design goes, people always ask me, like, did you design it? Um, like, did your artist design it? And you know, honestly, like a lot of the design, it, it just, it's conversations that I would have with my tattoo artist. He knows me very well now. Um, and um, and I just, tr I trust him. Like I trust him and we talk about concepts and ideas. And then a lot of it is just the aesthetics of, like my legs are just about cohesive design that's just like pulling elements and color and pieces from the rest of my body so that it, so that aesthetically it looks good together so um, I'm gonna wrap up this video by thanking you and bringing it back to the title which was my like bait for trying to get you to come on live and I hope I don't report this video tonight I hope I share it effectively um, and I hope I save it to my camera roll effectively. But um, um, P.S. I also never ended up feeling judged by my church like I feared. So um, <clears throat> I mentioned that earlier. So I wanted to circle back to it. <clears throat> um, I do get some negative comments. They do hurt my feelings. But um, it's the way it is. And uh, mostly I get overwhelming positivity and that keeps me going. So um, I wanted to bring it back to why I've already won this contest. <laughs> because I told you yesterday, and if you missed it, I'm definitely out of my league, I'm definitely not model material, uh, like by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's also a popularity, like it's a popularity contest too, so it's based on votes. So um, I, the reason I say I've already won is because I'm like, 
the support from you guys and the fact that you guys have been voting and sharing and asking people to vote like is pure gold to me um, that we have. And this is, you guys are like my fitness community. Like I guarantee you 99% of the people that watch this are part of my fitness community. Um, cause that's mostly what I put out there on, on out here. And so, um, it's cool that my fitness community would rally behind something that is like not fitness. Um, it's cool that you guys would take the time to like it's just it's just so cool and I appreciate it so much so um, your love is why I've already won and also I've already won this contest because um, um, well there's different divisions Heidi there's different divisions so there's I think that there's like 40 divisions with 20 people in each one so I'm trying to get into the the next round, which would be the top 30. So like if I get into the top 30, that would be the coolest thing in the world. Um, I definitely need you guys. I definitely need your help. Um, so share it. Please do your little free vote every day. Um, please ask people to share. But um, my daughter, you guys, she, um, she texts me and she said, you are unapologetically you and that's all I aspire to be. And I could cry, I get choked up saying it because um, like she wanted me to do this and I had cold feet cause I knew like, I knew like, you know, I just, I was self-conscious about putting myself out there, I guess. I, I definitely <laughs> was. And so for my daughter to want me to do it and for her to say, you're unapologetically you and that's all I aspire to be is winning. And if, um, if showing her that kind of bravery and self-confidence um, is what putting myself out there, if, if, that's, if that's the, um, the only thing that comes out of it, then it's the best thing in the world. So. Um, I came on live again. There's some other topics that I'll come back to this week. I am traveling with friends tomorrow, so um, hopefully they won't mind me breaking away and doing some live video with you guys. I don't think they'll mind. <laughs> um, but I was going to address some of like my frequently asked questions, like which areas hurt the most and um, how much money have you spent and like... <laughs> Um, there's a lot of questions that I get that I thought I could come on as topics like how have my how has how has my family all responded? Um, my son has started to get a bodysuit by the same artist and like how that happened, um, which was not encouraged by me. I mean, like I love it, I'm all for it, but it wasn't something that I pushed for. So I will share all of those things with you guys over the next two weeks. Um, please keep voting. And thank you for hanging out with me tonight. Now let me see if I can, now let me see if I can do this right, you guys. Don't let me screw it up. Okay, ready? Finish the video, goodbye. Hopefully it'll post. <laughs>